Samsung PN60E8000. This is a 60-inch plasma TV. This is Samsung's best television for 2012. It has more features, bells, whistles, doodads, and what have you than you could care to mention. Of course, I'm going to try in the following video. This video will apply to the 51 and 64-inch members of the series as well. Now, the real standout feature for this TV is smart interaction. It's unlike anything on any other TV. There's a built-in camera and microphone uh, that enables the TV to interpret your gestures and voice voice commands. Uh, I went into this feature in depth. You can check out CNET for the full details, but the short story is that it doesn't really work all that well. Uh, Microsoft Connect, for example, is a lot better at interpreting gestures and voice, and we really don't think it's all that useful unless you're, you know, going to lose your remote control on a constant basis. Speaking of remotes, another big step-up feature is a touch remote. Samsung includes two clickers with this TV, one a standard multi-button remote, and one a touch version that actually has a thumb pad, sort of like a laptop computer. Uh, in practice, it wasn't as sensitive as a laptop and it was actually a little bit more frustrating to use than a regular remote, but it's pretty useful if you're going to be, you know, navigating the web browser built into this TV. Of course, if you're going to be using the web browser significantly, I recommend you get the $99 optional keyboard, which has a built-in touchpad. It actually works with Samsung's Android devices as well, so that's a lot cooler and worked a lot better. Of course, I mentioned the built-in web browser. It's the best found on any smart TV suite. Samsung Smart TV Suite has more apps than any other TV manufacturers. In terms of major apps, they are missing Amazon Instant, which is kind of a big knock, but they more than make up for it by having exclusive access to HBO Go, which for HBO subscribers is one of the best TV apps you can get. Samsung also offers a few uh, custom apps like Family Story, which enables sharing among Samsung devices, and a couple of other things, including uh, built-in cloud storage, so you can actually upload things from from the TV and vice versa to the cloud. So all those are pretty unique and make for a very robust smart TV suite. One other feature Samsung throws into this TV is its IR blaster that actually uses Bluetooth to send commands to a cable box or a Blu-ray player. That means that you can use your gestures or voice to control those devices, although control is really rudimentary and not really worth it. The Smart Touch remote also uh, works with the IR blaster to allow control with a sort of Harmony remote-esque setup, but it's really not nearly as good as a Harmony. And in practice, we just recommend that you go ahead and get a standard third-party remote like those harmonies. Other standout features on this set include an excellent selection of picture adjustments, 10-point uh, grayscale, and the best color management system in the business. So if you're going to get this TV calibrated, it should turn out very nice. Speaking of picture quality, Samsung's E8000 is the best plasma the company has ever made. Uh, superb black levels, extremely deep. It also has that very accurate color that we like to see. Of course, it has all the plasma perks, including excellent uniformity and off-angle performance. Uh, on the downside, its shadow detail wasn't quite as good as we've seen on some of the best TVs. The TV also has slightly worse ability to reject ambient light than some of the other TVs we've seen. That's compounded by the fact that the 60-incher didn't get as bright as we've seen on some other TVs of its size. But all told, the Samsung PNE8000 has excellent picture quality in 2D. In 3D, its picture is also very good, actually better than a competing Panasonic plasma we tested recently. Samsung throws in two pairs of 3D glasses. They're not all that comfortable, but uh, of course they are free, and that's more than can be said for a lot of TV manufacturers. On the back, Samsung actually has one fewer HDMI inputs with only three. That might be an issue if a lot of stuff connected to this TV. I like the design of this Samsung as much as any plasma I've ever seen, except for the stand. I find that spider stand a little bit weird, but of course, to each his own. Uh, the minimal styling around the edge, however, is really nice. It's got a nice dark bezel, very thin. And of course, when seen from the side, it's also really thin. You might mistake it for an LCD TV. And that's a not-so-quick look at Samsung's best plasma TV for 20